you see. The word in Arabic uh, in the Quran, Allah mentions that uh, the reason, one of the reasons that He has made peoples in a hierarchy in this world, لَقَدْ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَكُمْ مَعِيشَتْكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا we have uh, given different livelihoods to people in the life of this world. That they might take one, uh, uh, some from others work. In other words, they employ them. The word used for employing them is sukhriya, which if you just change it to sukhriya and change a diacritical mark, the exact same word now becomes to mock them, to humiliate them, to exploit them. By one slight change, in the same way that you have uh, Isa is called al Messiah, The Dajjal, the Antichrist, is called... Uh, and Antichrist is really a bad uh, translation for Dajjal. Dajjal literally means, and it's used in Arabic, and any Arab knows this, it means imposter. It means somebody pretending to be something he is not. If you say Dajjal to... to to an Arab about somebody, he will understand that that person is an imposter. In other words, he is presenting himself as something and in reality he's something else. So the Messiah, who is Isa, the Messiah, in the last manifestation of the people on the earth, there is this uh, Dajjal, who is an imposter, Messiah. He is called Messiah. That change is literally one dot on the form of the letter Ha. You put a dot on it and it goes from being Messiah to Masih, a monster. And so this is the nature of the world, you see. That very slight changes of perception, very slight changes in human nature for Sukhriya and Sikhriya can radically alter the transaction between human beings. When Allah says, Allah al Quran, He is telling us that He taught the Quran to the human being through the Prophet Muhammad. And then immediately after that, to give us a clear definition of Ar Rahman, He says, Khalaq al Insan. Now, Khalaqa is a beautiful word in Arabic. It means to create out of nothing when we are talking about Allah. If we say, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ We say, Allah has created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. If He created them out of something, we would say, صَوَّرَ Fashion them, form them from an already existing material. When we say, خَلَقَ When we say, Allah is al-Khaliq What we are saying is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this out of nothing. Not from his own self. This is not an emanation from God. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He did not produce anything. He did not give birth to anything. Nothing came out of him. Wa lam yulad. And he came out of nothing. He did not come out of anything. Allah always was. Allah was and nothing was with him. And he is as he was in his absolute reality. Because we are contingent. Our existence is based on Allah's existence. We are not absolute reality. This is not absolute reality. None of this. It's contingent. On that Allah has made it out of nothing. And at the moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides, He can again return it to nothing. As it was. Now if you use the word khalaqa for a human being, it means to tell a lie. You see. Or ikhtalaqa. To tell a lie. Because we do not create. Inna Allaha in al bayhaqi the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allaha khaliqu kulli sani'in wa san'atihi. Allah created every sani' which is a maker of things that already exist. He makes something out of them. He has created every manufacturer and that which he manufactures. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality has created the airplanes. He's created all of uh, these uh, wonders that we see through the means of His creation. But He is the Creator and He is the sole Creator. Human beings are not creators. They manufacture out of material that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated them to use. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like in Mauritania where I studied in West Africa. They're very simple people, Bedouin people. 
and yet they have very sophisticated understanding of things. Uh, because of their simplicity, they tend to see things as they are. Simple people uh, are not stupid by any means. Simple people are, are, are oftentimes much more insightful than clever and complicated people. And uh, we were once talking uh, about airplanes, and this Mauritanian said to me a little piece of poetry. He said, uh, the airplane is no big deal. In other words, it didn't impress him. Now this is a man living really in a Iron Age culture, still. I mean, literally, the only thing that they work with are very simple tools that they make themselves. They have no sense of factories, of modern uh, civilization at all. And he said, إِنَّ الْوَتَى فِي الْفَلَاتِ حَيْثُ يَجْرِي يُجْرِيهِ رَبُّنَا عَظِيمُ الْقَدْرِ كَذَا الطَّيَّارُ حَيْثُ طَارَ يَطِيرُهُ الْإِلَاهُ لَا نَصَارَ He said to me that this automobile traveling around in the desert, it's Allah that makes that thing go. And this plane that's flying up in the air, it's Allah flying it, not the Christians. And this is Tawheed. This is the empowering perspective of Tawheed. You see, if you are a Muahid, then nothing, ever, nothing can diminish your worth before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. If you are the simplest man or woman, living the simplest existence, with the simplest of understandings, and yet you are Muahid, you understand the concept of Tawheed, which is the most empowering concept ever given to humankind, not fire, Tawheed. That this concept alone, when it, when it is firmly established in the heart, enables the human being to exist on this earth with dignity. With a dignity that can never be taken away from him by any technical means, by any punitive measures. None of that can diminish the human dignity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. Bani Adam, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا Bani Adam. We have ennobled the children of Adam by the fact that we are Adami, that we walk on the earth, but by the Muahid in particular. So Allah says, He khalaq al-insan. Now the human being, insan, is a beautiful word. It comes from a root word which means to be forgetful. Nasiya, he forgot. When Ibn Abbas was asked about it, he said, this is why he forgot. Because this is why he is called insan. Because he is forgetful. The human being by his nature is forgetful. If you forget, remember. This is why the Quran itself is a dhikr. It is a reminder of something that we already know. We already know in our hearts, dwelling within our hearts, is a reverberation of a primordial word, which is, Alastu bi Rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? And the answer came back, Bala, in affirmation. This resonates in the human heart. This is a resonance that the human being cannot put aside. And, he, and the human being will be in turbulence until he recognizes the source of this inner turmoil which is that he has not consciously regained that remembrance of the mithaq that he took with his creator in the unseen world when he said, surely you are my Lord. The word aslama, Muslim, aslamtu, means to give up. If you look in the, any dictionary, aslamtu means to give up, to abandon. What you give up is you give up illusion. You give up all of these false gods. You give up otherness. And you accept that you are the Abdullah, that you are the Amatullah. And this is the message of Islam. It is a reminder to humankind. Ya Yuhannas. Oh mankind, oh humankind. Ya Yuhannas. This is a khitab. It is a declaration from the Lord of humankind to humankind to remember who they are and whose they are. To remember who they are and whose they are. To whom we belong. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi And this is the message and it does not go away. 
Because the questions do not go away. The Quranic questions 